Welcome to another Plants vs. Zombies video! If you enjoyed my fire and ice strategy, then you're in for a treat because this is similar to that. Once again, we'll be playing Last Stand Endless, but this time, we'll try out the 8 cob strategy. If I were to describe it in one word, it's precise. First, I'll show it to you in action like before, and then talk you through how to build it up from scratch. Was that awesome or what? Here's how I did it. Now is the perfect time to talk about the pros and cons. The pros are its low maintenance, sun efficient, easy to rebuild, and most importantly, it handles Giga Gargantuars with ease as you have seen. For the cons, it needs precision all throughout and it's actually difficult to set up. But that's what the rest of the video is for. We have a lot to cover so let's start. I completed the setup in 26 flags, 25 on my first try. And for easier consumption, I'll be grouping the flags, telling you what we want to achieve per group, and dropping some tips and tricks along the way. The first group is flags 1 to 3. The maximum amount of cob cannons you can set up during flag 1 is 6, cob number 7 will be on flag 2, and cob number 8 will be on flag 3. But make sure to set up the kernel pulse like what I'm doing right now so we can maximize them. The worst that could happen in these flags, or in any flags for that matter, is for any one of your plants to get eaten. Because then you have to replace them and guess what? You have limited sun. That's actually why it took me a flag later in my second try to finish the setup. So make sure to stock on some hammers in case of emergency. And in case you don't know, Giga Gargantuar appears at flag 21, so make sure your offense is all good by then. The second group is flag 4 and 5. Here we can set up our umbrella leaves and cattails with pumpkins so that the melon pulse and winter melon can replace their seed slots. Not only that, this way, we can get the bungee and balloon zombies off our minds. Prevention is better than cure. And speaking of preventive measures, I find it a good practice to reserve one of the cob cannons for the water towards the final wave. As soon as the message that zombies are approaching disappears, aim for your cattails. The third group would comprise of flags 6, 7, and 8. The goal here is to set up four gloom shrooms, two in the water, two at land. I started with the land because they don't require lily pads and therefore are cheaper, and they could also survive without pumpkin protection as of now. 
The real threats at this point are the fast zombies, which are the dolphin riders and the pole vaulting ones. Aim your cob cannons at the tile in front of their lounge rooms and you should be fine. And if you find yourself in a sticky situation, because I sure did, go ahead and use your hammers to whack those troublemakers dead. Oh, and I almost forgot. Do keep an eye on the pumpkins for your frontliners to make sure that they're being replaced as appropriate. After this, tap yourself in the back because you deserve it. The force group would have flags 9 to 12. At this point, the zombies will be too much for the cob cannons to handle alone. So the idea is to fill in the gaps in column 1 with winter melons. And just like with the gloom shrooms, I started planting on the ground because it's cheaper there. Oh, and this guy is here. I probably don't need to tell you this, but keep an eye out for it. Or rather, an ear. You'll know when it's coming because you'll hear the notorious jack-in-the-box music. And let's not forget about this guy. Seriously, it's annoying. At this point, the bungee zombie is a threat to your cattails and gloom shrews. And if they succeed in taking them away, you're in trouble. You can keep them at bay if you time your cob cannons properly, but if all else fails, use a hammer. You have to finish this level with your melons and shrooms pumpkin protected, like so. Otherwise, they're zombie snacks. Halfway through our journey, we have the fifth group, which are flags 13 to 15. This could either be easy or difficult, depending on how lucky you are with your cob cannons, because sometimes they do reward some. Our goal here is to build and pumpkin protect column 2. And we really have to start now because on flag 14, the digger zombies will arrive. A pair of gloom shrooms in each side of the pool should get you through this level, but if you can afford more, by all means do so. And don't forget to protect them with pumpkins ASAP if you're able to. The sooner you're able to accomplish this, the better, because on Flag 15, things will get really serious with the arrival of Gargantuar and the Imp. Imps tend to land on columns 2 to 4, so after building your Gloom Shrooms, your top priority is to pumpkin protect those columns. You can see that the bungee zombies actually got one of my gloom shrooms, so that's a problem. Don't be like me, use a hammer. And save your cob cannons for threats. Next group we have flags 16 to 18, 17 if you're lucky with the sun. And the goal here is to build and pumpkin protect column 4. I highly suggest to do the pumpkins first because they are cheaper and they provide protection. And anyway, the only thing we need to build for this group are the two gloom shrooms on both ends of column 4, which should be easy if you're lucky with sun again. Your launch should look something like this, and it's actually starting to resemble the final form. The things that could slow you down at this point are of course the imps, but just do the pumpkins first and you should be fine. I was. Wonderful. Now moving on. Our penultimate group is from flags 19 to 23. And the main goal is to build and pumpkin protect column 3. But of course, pumpkins first. Ultimately, this will be filled out with winter melons. And for obvious reasons, we should start with the sides of the pool first. And should an accident like this happen, just reload the cob cannons before continuing the onslaught. Ideally, column 4 should be ready for the devil in flag 21. If you're like me and it's not, use a hammer. I really hope that you'll have a better experience than me because I was just figuring these things out when I was doing it. Honestly, all the stress is in the setup. Once you're past that, everything will be nice and easy. While the strategy is effective, the way how I set it up is by no means perfect. I really like it when I'm reading the comments and I go, why didn't I think of that? So if you have lots of ideas on how to do things more effectively or efficiently or both, then please share it in the comments and feel free to ask things you didn't see or weren't mentioned in the video. And holy moly, we're in the last stretch. Flags 24 to 26, here we go. Like with my other strategies, the only thing left to do at this point is to fill the pool with pumpkin protected gloom shrooms. And to be honest, 12 years ago when I was that kid who tried his best to proceed to this level, I never thought of using it because I, I thought using the coffee bean to wake them up was too bothersome, but only now did it make sense to me. 
If it was a chess piece, I'd say it's the king. Not threatening from afar, but get too close and it's over. The last piece of the puzzle. Here we go. And we're done. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you're interested in seeing more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you're always updated whenever I upload new content. Thanks for watching and have a great day.